Welcome. And the question today from Al Posh is, what's the cringiest thing you've seen a bride and groom do for their wedding? Hi, this is Derek. I just put the drama llama, Fred, back in his llama pen, so that I can do this quick video for you with some of the stuff that Fred found on Reddit earlier today. If this is your first time watching our videos, help me out by watching to the end, and then giving me some feedback in the comment area below. I do respond, to every single one, so don't be shy. And if you want more of these videos daily, don't forget to like and subscribe, with notifications turned on for this channel. Oh boy, let's get ready for some drama. Never Zen answered with. Long ago I worked at a banquet hall and witnessed a fully NASCAR themed wedding. During the reception, they played the audio of the proposal going out over the PA at the track. It was fully unintelligible. Other highlights were the owner locking himself in his office, to avoid the bride's father, because he was threatening him to haggle on the costs. In the end, we had to call the police, because the bride in the gown climbed over the bar to steal more sweet sweet MGD, after we had closed the taps and the event was over. I like Mr. Rogers answered with. I'm in the wedding industry. I've been to over 3000 weddings. The singing your vows thing is never ever going to work out like you think it will. Never sing your vows. Never attempt to sing any part of your wedding. It will not go as you visualized it. A wedding day is not a good time for surprises. Don't surprise your bride with an unexpected part of the ceremony. Don't surprise your mom by the wedding itself, true story. The bride told her mom she was going to an engagement dinner. The only exception to this rule is if you give the bride a surprise addition to her ring, grandma's diamond, a ring made from her parents' rings, etc. Jokes about sex later are never funny. They make people uncomfortable, and it makes you look like an adolescent. There will always be crickets after you make the joke. If you are going to be late, communicate that to everyone somehow. Have your so, or your parents, or someone tell everyone you will be late. The staff needs to know, especially. If you forget the rings, don't stress it. It's a funny story. If you forget your vows, wing it as best you can, just don't sing. Ask the officiant for help for last minute vows. Finally, don't get drunk and be an ass. You don't want to be that guy. Plus, if you are drunk, you won't be able to have sex later. Crickets. Lil Sebastian 17 answered with. I was a photographer for a wedding where the bride was marrying a man with two kids from a previous relationship. I was in the bridal suite when the bridal party was getting ready and all of the bridesmaids had matching silk robes. The flower girl, groom's daughter, was there too. They asked me to take a group photo of the bridal party, and one of the women in a silk robe, was standing awkwardly to the side. I thought she was just shy or something, so I waved her into the photo and the room got dead silent, and the bride was like, oh no, we don't want her in the photos, and glared at me like I should have known that. Apparently she was the groom's ex-wife, and was there to take care of the flower girl. But why did you give her a matching bridesmaid robe? I wanted to crawl in a hole and die. Man on the paper moon answered with. At my cousin's wedding, they did the thing where the groom removes the bride's garter and tosses it to all the single guys. I guess none of the guys wanted to be next to be married, because once the groom tossed the garter, no one grabbed it. It just landed on the ground a few feet in front of a crowd of motionless guys. The groom tossed the garter three times before one guy half-heartedly picked it off the ground. The bride wouldn't look at any of those guys for the rest of the night. Kyla answered with. My uncle not only brought up his daughter's ex-boyfriend in his speech, but talked about their toxic relationship for a solid five minutes. I highly recommend preparing a speech before talking in front of a room full of people. SDJ answered with. Not the couple, the pastor kept saying, Our Heavenly Father, Daddy God, while marrying them. Edit. Thanks for the gold. For context it was a military wedding. It was just the couple and the pastor, it was live streamed on Twitch, and the pastor was probably about 25. It was in Hawaii. He was wearing flip-flops, and a lay made of fake flowers. Yet another Dave answered with. Oh let's see. Groom changed who his best man was, and didn't tell the original best man until the start of the ceremony. Bride and groom asked a guest to bartend the reception at the reception. Groom dirty danced with his stepmom, full hands on ass. Bride and groom hauled their wedding party up, 
to do a choreographed dance to Meatloaf's Paradise by the dashboard lights, but didn't give them any pre-warning or teach them the dance. That song is 8.5 minutes long. Wedding was at a scenic boarding school campus during the summer. Guests were told dormitories were complimentary to stay in. Guests were not told there would be no bedding provided or AC in the building. Groom later emailed everyone who stayed in a dorm asking for money. Same bride and groom chose another friend's wedding reception, as the right setting, to yell at a third pair of mutual friends for not including them in their wedding party. This was all one wedding? Bash no answered with. Requiring every attendee to bring a date because she didn't want, sad, lonely people on her day. Not my friends luckily, but pretended to be a friend's date because, she really wanted to see her cousin get married. Iced coffee and beer answered with. Potluck wedding with no alcohol or music. Groom kept showing people his flask and bragging about it. Macaroni was the only redeemable thing, when I went to scoop there was hair in it. Very sad. Kronkasaurus answered with. At the reception, the groom and his groomsmen sang a god-awful acapella version of Stand By Me. The worst part was, he wasn't even singing it to his wife. He was singing it to his mom. Oh darling, darling stand. By. Me. Chinese weddings, man. Kelt Gryffindor answered with. I don't know. But one of my favorite memories from years of cater waitering was, this long Indian wedding, where they had a lot of random relatives get up to give a toast. Everyone's giving these long speeches and then one uncle gets up, goes, I made him waffles once, and sits back down. I swear to God. Bless that man, wherever he is. Toasts in general are usually terrible and full of cringe. Just keep it short, sweet, and genuine. No one wants 15 minutes of inside jokes that are embarrassing, and don't make sense. The Seuss 44 answered with. Dated a girl in my 20s and went to her friend's wedding in upstate New York. In the middle of the service, the minister's cell phone rang, he answered, it was God. God wanted to talk to the groom, conversation lasted a couple minutes. Then the ceremony continued. Sunset viewer answered with. The minister, or pastor, used to date the bride, and gushed about how wonderful she was. Told the groom if he ever died not to worry, he'd take care of her. I was shell-shocked. I so wished, I could think of a reason, to ask the couple for a copy of the video of their wedding, but couldn't quite find a legit one. Oh my gosh why would they choose this officiant? Sam Hamwich answered with. I wasn't a guest, I was working the wedding. The bride got drunk and sat on some other dude's lap for two hours, and flirted with him while the groom sat by himself, at the head table with a defeated look on his face. Vixis Satut answered with. Not a wedding, but an engagement ceremony. They reenacted a scene from an old romantic film, about two lovers in the 1800s. In front of like, 300 people. Sorry, engagement ceremony? What's that? A way to spend money you don't realize you need, and to invite others to spend money on gifts to replenish your out-of-pocket costs, for hosting the event in the first place. Iguana tap that Axolotl answered with. This was more so the bride's family. One of my first classmates to get married, we were 19, had a small reception. Mostly family and friends from high school, nothing wrong with that. They decided to auction off the garter belt, and whoever won, took it off the bride. Most of us were poor college students, so the only people bidding were her dad and uncles. It was super uncomfortable. Edit. I did not expect this reaction. So to answer the most common questions, the brides, very drunk dad, won to the tune of $500 plus. Money grabbed by the couple to help with honeymoon expenses. This was not Alabama, North Dakota, and this was not the normal garter tradition. By any means, just a particularly cringeworthy version of an already cringy tradition. Gross. Looney Cat answered with. They sang their vows to each other. Neither had a singing voice. Vows were generally batshit crazy, like submissive in the bedroom, and not asking about where she was going. The autotune microphones were a terrible idea. Their vow songs shared a chorus, and it was awful, and they expected the guests to sing along with the chorus. 
The vow singing lasted 20 minutes. Pure cringe. Mice Rike answered with. When I was 11, my cousin got married for the third time. I never really liked her because. A. She was 37 when I was 11, we didn't have a lot in common and. B. She was pretty full of herself. The wedding itself was fine, pretty boring but fine. Then we get to the reception. We were told we had to sit down as soon as we got there, some people found it weird. But, I've only been to one other wedding before this, her other marriages were when I was little, no kids were allowed at her weddings, so I didn't think anything of it. The bride and groom then make a huge dramatic entrance, and everyone awkwardly claps for them, as they strutted around the room with actual crowns on their heads. The bride then gets the microphone, and hands it to her mom, and asks her to say something she loves about the bride. She then tells her mom to pass it on, and says she wants everyone in the room to say one thing they absolutely love about the bride. Not the bride and groom, not their relationship, just the bride herself. It was super awkward. Edit. This blew up a lot more than I thought it would. LOL. So for everyone asking, what did you say? And, where is she now? I said, your eyeshadow is pretty. Because I felt so awkward and wanted to die. My older brother said, pass which made her force a fake laugh, and urge him to say something. He ignored it, and she kept insisting so he said, your parents. And pass the mic on. She and husband three, divorced a few months later, because he was caught cheating with an 18 year old still in high school. He gave off bad pedo vibes, to the point where even strangers noticed, and wanted kids to stay away from him. She married another guy a few years later and they are still together. Bonus, she likes to take pictures with a life-size cutout of Trump and post it on Facebook. Because she, her mom, and sister believe it looks so real. Nope. And she even pretends she's been caught cheating on husband 4 with the cutout. Posting pictures of her kissing it, or, it in her room with a caption like, oops, caught with my side piece or some cringe like that. Husband is also a hard Trump supporter, so he laughs about it, but her daughter, from marriage to, deleted her from Facebook. And often stays with her dad because she can't stand her mom anymore. Got your hang son answered with. I went to a wedding with my ex a few years back. It was one of his fraternity brother's wedding, and apparently, the bride's parents were ridiculously conservative. So conservative that they have super edited versions of every song the DJ played, including bleeping out the word shots from shots by LM Fowl. Also, it was a dry wedding, so this rendition of the song was almost too on the nose. Well, there you have it. A perfectly great question answered by a bunch of fine and honorable citizens. Help support this channel by smashing the like and subscribe buttons. And hit that silly little bell as well to ensure you get the latest videos as they come out. Fred is always finding stuff for me to post regularly. So this is Derek signing off, thanks for watching. Good grief, it sounds like Fred is out of his pen again. I think he found more drama for me to share with you. See you soon.